Okay, so for ages now, years, I've wanted to share a version of Jarvis that anyone can run on the computer they own, um, that doesn't require like a ton of resources, doesn't re require like a top of the line GPU or anything like that. Um, and so I've created this repo called Jarvis MLX, finally. Um, and this is optimized to run on Mac. I'm starting with Mac because it's my daily driver and uh, it should run on any M1, M2 or M3 chip. So even if you have like a MacBook Air, this in theory should run offline. So inside this project um, is a few different things. We have a main.py. This is where the all the basic logic happens. We have a test folder, some tests to run. It's pretty bare bones, pull requests wel welcome. We have um, STT, which is speech to text. So this is just containing like um, a version of Whisper that's optimized for Mac with MLX, but also a voice acti activity detection.py, which is um, literally just when I speak, the computer recognizes that I'm speaking. And then finally, we have Mellow. Mellow is a text-to-speech engine that can run at reasonably low latency and also be fine-tuned with your own data set. Um, I've stripped it down, but there is an original repo that's linked in the readme. Um, I've stripped it down just for inference. So this should hopefully only contain the code necessary to run. And this is the only thing that's not currently optimized for Mac. If someone wants to optimize it for me, Please submit a PR. If not, I'll get around to it at some point. So Jarvis MLX, it's a little complex to set up. If you're not used to Conda environments and things like that, you're going to go have to go and learn. But you can also follow me on X for up get updates. I'm going to be maintaining this. This is going to be my main home project going forwards. And um, really, like, I just want to provide something that's simple, um, simple to understand. There's no UI yet. It's just command line but it runs relatively quickly. So for speech to text, converting what I say into some text to give the AI, I use Whisper. This is state of the art language uh, understanding from OpenAI. And um, I'm using the MLX optimized version. So it's quantized, it's squashed, and it all, it'll run on your MacBook, which is really nice. And because it's V3, it's also really accurate, even though it's quantized. So that's pretty awesome. Then we have the large language model. For this, out of the box, I'm running Phi 3. Phi 3 is, let's just go to Phi 3. Uh, is this the original? I don't think this is the original. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the image original. So I'm running this, but I'm running the MLX version. So what does that mean? So this is a tiny language model. It's only 3.8 billion parameters. Um, and in like normal person speak, this means it's about, it's under 10 gigabytes. And it means that your MacBook can load, even if you have a six, 16 gigabyte um, chip, it can load this model. However, I'm using the, um, the quantized version, the MLX Phi 3, which I think I'm using the four bit version in the code. So this is even smaller. If I go to the files here, you can see this is only 2.1 gigabytes. So even if you have an eight gigabyte chip, you can still run this language model. And that's why I've chosen it. It's not the most intelligent. It's not GPT-4 level, but it can be fine-tuned on your device if you want, and you can swap it out with a little bit of research, or you can swap it out for a different MLX model if you have a more powerful machine. And you can do that by going to Hugging Face, look in the MLX community. And then down here at the bottom, you have Gemma, you have um, Mistral. These are really fantastic models. I'd recommend Instruct V0.2. Um, this is really nice, but it's not quantized. It's quite big. It's like 14 gigabytes. So if you have like an M1 Max or something like that, then maybe you can, you can run it. But if not, stick to Phi. You can get a lot out of it if you fine tune it. Okay, so that's that. Uh, and then we have text-to-speech. So like, how does the system talk? It uses something called Mellow TTS. Mellow TTS is um, this awesome library um, made by a company called MyShell. And they have uh, English, Spanish, French, 
um, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean versions of this, but I've stripped it down to just be English focused, as soon as that's what I'm using. Um, and if you if you don't want that, then you can come back in here and you can add in the bits, or you can just clone this. It should just work out the box if you replace my mellow directory with this. If you want to bloat the directory yourself, you can, but I've stripped it down. So when you clone the repo or you download the zip and you unzip it, you're going to get a file structure that looks something like this. I'm updating it every day, but it looks something like this. So you've got the readme. This will walk you through what it is um, and also how to get MLX running natively on your um, with Python in an environment. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is to pip install everything. So let's actually just add to the readme. <laughs> Firstly, pip install the requirements. So we're just going to add um, the following to the readme's, and then we also want to add yeah, MLX. Ah, oh, we already have MLX. Yeah. So in the requirements.txt, this is a file. This is like if you don't know Python, these are all the requirements that you need to run this code. So you have and they all have different jobs. So I've tried to separate them out. I might not have done a very good job. But you have basically your machine learning libraries. You have some miscellaneous like testing uh, libraries. You have some some niche libraries <laughs> used for um, Mellow TTS. And then you have some like other things to do with audio, um, which are a little bit more niche. So I've separated them out. Uh, if we go to main.py, I'll walk you through what this does. So, okay. So we, uh, when we run this file, we import a bunch of stuff. And at the moment, there's this weird bug where if I don't have this at the bottom, I get this weird error. Um, if you want to fix it, submit a PR. This is the first bounty of the product uh, of the project. Um, you also have this master prompt. So this is the first fun bit. This is where the instructions are given to the, uh, to the model. Um, I'm actually going to whack this because this didn't work very well. So this is the instruction that's given to Phi3 to act like Jarvis. And you can put anything you want here. Um, just don't bloat it because it is a small model. It's going to struggle to understand huge, complex tasks. Um, but simple things, it should should work relatively well. And of course, if you're swapping out for something like Mistral or something even bigger, um, maybe like a Llama 3 or something like that, um, then you can put in a lot of detail in here and get a really nice behavior out of the box without having to fine-tune, which is always fun. Uh, you can ignore this. This is just the structure of a, of a message um, in the history as you talk. But this is the fun bit. So this is the client, and I'm going to try and minimize this as much as possible so you guys can see all of the different functions that run. So when I initially create the client, what happens is it sets up a bunch of stuff, it greets you, it stops listening, it sets everything up, then it starts listening. So what does that mean? So when it starts listening, um, it spawns off this separate task that is just listening in a loop all the time. It's just listening to the microphone and it's just trying to write down everything that it hears. And sometimes it can be a bit sensitive so if we go into here, you can adjust the sensitivity here. But what it's doing is it's, it's recording everything in the room and it's transcribing it. And then what's happening is it's just storing that audio data. Um, ah, it's not actually transcribing it. Please forgive me. So it's not transcribing it. What's happening is it's, it's recording all of the data in the room, um, all of the noise, all of the things it thinks is speech into a queue, which is what you can find here. So anything that it thinks is speech is going to put in this list, basically, um, a queue. Then we have this separate, so that's one task. Then we have this separate thing, um, which is called the transcribe loop. So this is running. And what this basically does is if we are in listening mode, which means we're not talking, the, the Jarvis is not speaking at that moment, so it's listening. Um, we check to see if there is any voice data available in that list. Um, and if there's enough of it, um, we stop listening. We turn off the microphone for a second. We figure out what that person said using that data in the list. And we then add that as the user's input to a history object, which you can find up here, history. 
and the history is just a list of these messages with a role, either assistant or user, and the content, which is the text that they said. So we add that as the user's message, and then we uh, get the entire history as a string. So this takes all of the objects that are in the history list, and it returns them as one long big piece of text. Then we pass that text and our master prompt to the model. So we generate a bunch of, oh, where, how do, wait, one second. Oh yeah, so the master prompt goes into here. Where is the master prompt? Where is the master prompt? Okay, the master prompt gets added when you add to history. Fair enough. So once we've got the history as a big bulk of text, we pass the, um, the big bulk of text um, through to the model followed by this assistant tag and the model will simply predict what it thinks the assistant should say next. This is just how all language models work. So it's going to predict the response. Um, and it's got a bunch of additional parameters you can pass. I would recommend playing around with these if you're not getting the outputs that you expect, specifically temperature and max tokens. Max tokens is, is kind of like, um, think of, of it as like max letters or max words if you want to divide this by roughly four. So this maximum tokens is like 25 words at the moment by default because it's 100. But if you wanted a much larger completion, maybe 500, 1000, something like that, then you can increase this. Um, that's where it is. So then we um, basically take out the response from the LLM and we just separate out all of the things that it's predicted to just get what it thinks the assistant should say next. And we add that to the history so that we can remember what the assistant said while it was talking. And then we use this speak function. And in the speak function, um, what we do is we generate using Mellow TTS, the text that the assistant said, the that the assistant replied with. Um, we select our speaker. If you're using a custom voice that you've trained, this is where you would change the speaker ID we have a speaking speed. I've set it to 0.95 because I just found it easier to understand. Um, quiet just means that it's not, not printing to your terminal what it's doing. And the SDP ratio is kind of like, uh, allows it to change its pitch a little bit. So we then remove any silences. I noticed that Mellow TTS seems to generate this silence at the end of the audio and, it's, and it feels like lag, but it's not lag. So I just used this, um, this other library called Librosa, which allows you to strip um, anything that's under a certain decibel out of the audio file. So we, we, we basically take the raw data that was generated by the text-to-speech process, we pass that to this function to reduce the, um, the silences, and then we play it. It's all a NumPy array. Um, so nothing is ever saved to disk. There was an earlier version of this GitHub repo that everything was saved to disk, but it was slower. So this is improved. One thing that I would say is that Mellow TTS is trained to generate these massive audio files. You could probably get away with something that's like 16,000 or something like that, but that's the, that's the quality we have right now, 44.1K um, Hertz. So, uh, what does blocking mean? Blocking basically means that uh, you're waiting for the audio to play before moving on to the next line of code. Then we do a one second sleep because I notice that sometimes this resolves before the audio is finished. I think this is just a lag between Python and your OS playing the audio. Might, I might be wrong, um, but that's what that's doing. So we just have allow a second for cleanup and stuff. And then we toggle listening. Toggle listening just means we finish speaking, start listening. So when we run this, if I run this by just running Python main, good evening, how are you? Always slow the first time. Good evening, sir. I'm functioning optimally, ready to assist you. How may I help you today? I was just wondering if you were busy at the moment or if you could help me make a video.
Good evening, sir. I'm here to assist you, so I'm not busy. I can certainly guide you through the process of making a video. What specific help do you need? Just, that's everything, actually. Thanks for now. You can say goodbye if you want. Good evening, sir. It was my pleasure to assist you. You're welcome, and feel free to return anytime you need help. Goodbye for now. Okay, it says good evening a lot because of the prompt I'm using, but other than that, I was running all offline in real time with decent latency. I think we can actually get faster because the um, slowest part of the process right now is this mellow TTS, and this is the only part of the system that is not optimized for MLX. Um, so it's just a ton of <laughs> it's just a ton of work to actually get this thing optimized for MLX. It's currently using PyTorch, um, and so it. it does use MPS as the device, but it's it could be optimized a little bit further. Um, maybe, I wonder how much work it would be. So it's like, yeah, it's 10 files that need, would need rewriting to optimize for MLX. So if anyone wants to do that, the PRs are welcome. Okay, that's it. That's, that's Jarvis MLX as of, uh, what is it? April the 29th, 2024. This is open source, so if you've got anything to add, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is training my own custom voice model and then training my own Phi 3 um, so that it acts a little bit more like Jarvis and it sounds a little bit more like Jarvis. And then I'll include the training code somewhere in this repo or maybe a separate repo um, just to keep, keep this one as light as possible. And then maybe we get to adding like a very basic UI and I think browser-based would be best because then it can just be an HTML file that acts as kind of like a client. Um, maybe, we'll see. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on X for updates on this model and make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already.